Today's video takes us to the bustling streets of Vietnam's capital city, where we'll explore its unique vibe, taste some incredible coffee, and discover delicious cuisine while learning about the city's history. After a less than ideal 13-hour bus ride from the ancient capital of Hue, we arrived early in the morning and settled into our hotel. Despite our plans to visit the iconic train street for coffee, the guards had another idea. We tried to unsuccessfully go to Train Street, but there are guards at the gate saying, no, 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 you can't go through. How do we go? <laughs> there was a nice gentleman, though. I think he's one of the coffee shop owners. Come back about 9 p.m. 9 p.m.? That's when the train actually comes through, but it is what it is. It's so weird, though. Yeah. You think they'd let you go when there's not danger. All right, where do we eat? With our coffee date thwarted, we changed plans and decided to search for some delicious food recommended by our friends. We're gonna go to a place called Pho Khun Tran Hong that our friends Brandon and Anya recommended to us to try some dishes that we've never tried before. a little mix up with the navigation. <laughs> Ashley had it on driving direction, so we were like, oh, eight minute walk. Easy. No big deal. <laughs> Easy. It was like a 30 minute walk. In the hottest part of the day. And it's the hottest day that we've had. It's 38 degrees. But we're on an island, which is pretty dope, and we're only one minute away. So little victories. Oh, here it is, and there's a little puppy to welcome us. Bye bye. There's more. Oh my gosh! Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, thank you. Come on. Oh my gosh! <laughs> they don't realize they just made Ashley's life. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Do I have your puppy? Do you have your puppy? Oh goodness! Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, there's so many, we're getting we're too much food. <laughs> okay, so we got our bokunbo. This is a lot of food. And we ordered another dish. There are, what, three, six, ten of these things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Basically what these are is they are a rolled pho noodle with beef inside of them. They look really, really good. It looks like there's just beef, lettuce, and then the, the rice wrapping. So let's try it out. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's so much food. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. Uh, so this is lunch. <laughs> they should have warned us. <laughs> I'm going to try this chili sauce with these rolls. These are so good. Mmm. These are amazing. Mm. Ooh, that's spicy too. <laughs> this place is phenomenal so far. I'm very excited to try that. I definitely recommend it based on the starter alone. It is called Ba Kun Fan Hong. Very, very, very good. What? This is Pho Chen Feng Zhao Bo. And it was described to me by our friend Brandon as pho beef with morning glory and then these little puffed up rice papers. He said it tastes kind of like beef and broccoli, so we're very excited to try it. I'm going to carefully build a perfect bite. Look at that bite. Mm. <laughs> it's a big bite. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is incredible. It's perfectly seasoned. It's very simple but elegant. I feel like that's a theme with Vietnamese food. It's fantastic. The morning glory, is tender and delicious. There's a lot of black pepper flavor, which I absolutely love. And these guys are so fun to eat. So there's actually like folded up rice noodle inside. It's crispy on the outside, but still soft and kind of chewy on the inside. And it leads to this really fun 
texture of a dish and it's just absolutely incredible. I just want to dip these little poofy rice papers. Mm. This is a dish I've never heard of. We're gonna enjoy this lunch. Thank you, Brandon, Anya. Great recommendation. We just met the two kindest guys. They asked us to sit down and share some traditional tea with them. It was so nice. We were just sitting on the curb, just chatting, and I don't know, it was just a really, really lovely experience. It's like the reason you travel. At this point in the evening, I started feeling a little bit off and I thought the caffeine and heat had gotten to me. I was afraid we were gonna have to call it an early night. It's such a beautiful day and the breeze is finally out, so I'm not ready to give up yet. I'm gonna drink this water and hopefully feel better. That way we can keep exploring. Walking on the sidewalks in Vietnam is like a maze. There's motorbikes. and stools and fires. I drink water. And why are you making that face? Because I'm stubborn and I don't drink water. <laughs> and then I don't feel well. Oh, those are the, this, uh, the worm things, I think. Okay. They smell delicious. <laughs> Would you eat one? Yeah, probably. Would you get one from there? Why not? It's called cha roi, cha roi, or a sandworm omelet. They're apparently very, very, very rare uh, because the because uh, the sandworms, I guess, are like harvested in the fall. Like right now? Really? Okay. All right. These might be sandworm pancakes, which smelled delicious if they were and if they're not they still smell delicious so I'm gonna go see what they are and probably buy one and try it either way I feel like it's got to be better than like just silkworm right yeah yeah okay just... yeah. 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 Uh, about you uh, Ready. <laughs> okay. Come on. Come on. There you go. Ah, right. Perfect. Good, good. Something smelled amazing, and we looked down, and it was these. It's not bad at all. It's very dilly. It has a little bit of fishiness, I guess. It tastes like a very herbal, herby herbaceous, whichever word of those is the appropriate word, frittata. It was 30,000 dong for one. I've added a healthy amount of chilies, some lime. We're gonna put some of this fresh dill and cilantro. All right, we're gonna try it all dressed up and ready to go. Oh, it's got noodles in it. Oh, interesting. Unless that's sandwich. Yeah. It tastes like lime and chilies and cilantro. It's good. All right, let's do this. Very flavorful. Yeah, it's not bad. It reminds me of a pickle. <laughs> Never, ever did I think I would be in Vietnam eating worm pancakes. <laughs> but very happy about it. It does taste pretty good. <laughs>
And here we are. We went from like, oh, we're gonna call it an early night and go home to worm pancakes in an alley. So if you're feeling sick in Vietnam, worm pancakes and water, and you're right back at it. Yeah. All right, we're next. To go. Ashley is the worst with directions. I don't know why I put her in charge of that. That away and then. Oh yeah, because she has the SIM card. somewhere very special but we'll tell you more about it once we get there. Ashley thinks it has to be this big lead up but we're going to get egg coffee and I'm excited. A very cool... From a very cool historic place. It's the first place that ever made egg coffee. to the original egg coffee. I'm really, really excited to try this out. I'm just gonna mix this up really, really well. That way the condensed milk and the egg gets mixed in with the bitter coffee at the bottom. That is amazing. It is so creamy. It's really good cup of coffee. The reason for creation of this drink in the first place was because there was a dairy scarcity back during the first Indochina War between Vietnam and France. The original founder of this cafe was creative. He worked at a hotel bar, I believe, and he used his ingenuity to mix ingredients like butter, sugar, cheese, and egg to kind of create a frothiness to cut the bitterness of the robusta bean, which is the bean traditionally grown here in Vietnam. Because if you've ever tried Vietnamese black coffee, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> right. This place is extremely popular because it is the cafe known for creating egg coffee. So usually it's packed through, but we got lucky. There's empty seats behind us and we've got one of the best seats in the house. Hanoi is very quickly becoming one of my favorite cities in the world. Yeah. Alright, well we're gonna drink our egg coffee and then get on with the rest of our day. Cheers! Uh, how much for one and one? Five thousand for one. Five thousand for one? Do I do two? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. One and one, please. Come on. Come on, thank you. We were just walking by this little stand and we got some bun bun. Come on! <laughs> and that's the guy that sold them to us. Yeah. This one looks like it's got a, a glaze on it. Well, I guess they both look like they have glaze on it, but this one looks a little bit yummier. I assume it's sweet, but let's find out. Oh my god. <laughs> Give me this thing. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is an amazing donut. If they were like made fresh, oh. I'm confused. What? It's got like. Custard? Potato? <laughs> or something? I have no idea, but it's also very good. I prefer this first one. Isn't that strange? Is it potato? Does this have potato? <laughs> oh yeah, they both have the same filling, I think. This one's cut in honey. Is that honey? I like this one. Mmm. 
Since our friends Brandon and Anya didn't lead us astray yesterday for food, we decided to try another one of their recommendations. We're gonna try Ban Quan today, and we are at a restaurant called Ban Quan Jia Tran. It's in an awesome little part of Hanoi, and we are super excited. We ordered only one, they brought us two. It's made using rice batter, pork, wood ear mushrooms, and shallots, and then they give you limes, chilies, fish sauce, and garlic with vinegar to dip it in. It's really good, but the vinegar and the garlic really does something to enhance the flavor of the fish sauce. It's almost like luncheon meat, like a like like a ham. And then you get crisp in the garlic, the chewiness of the rice paper, and the in the filling, the mushroom. I guess it's just mushroom, but the filling is incredible. I'm glad that it's not like a plate as tall as we got yesterday of that rolled pho. All right, so my turn to try this. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms. I have no idea if I've ever had a wood ear mushroom before, but we'll try it out. So Mike said this is pretty spicy because he put fresh chilies in it, but I'm usually okay with spice. This is what it looks like. Oh, come on. Come on. Put it on top. Thank you. I love that they're showing us how to do yeah, it. Yeah, come on. That's great. So she put a little bit of, uh, what is this, cilantro? Looks like there's a little bit of dill in there maybe too. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Changes the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like these. And I like this. Is this fish sauce? Mm -hmm. It is? Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just finished up our lunch and hopped into grab. Lunch was amazing. Each portion was 35,000 dong. We got a water, which was 10,000 dong. So the total lunch came out to only 80,000. And now we're on our way to the Haolo Prison, which was commonly referred to as the Hanoi Hilton by the American POWs during the American War or the Vietnam War as we know it. We may have just witnessed someone getting a DUI on a motorbike. There was a couple police and they had the little breathalyzer thing. And our grab driver here was like, oh shit. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. It cost 30,000 dong per person. We did also opt to get the audio guide for 100,000 dong per person. I'm sure it's going to be very heavy and very sad, but let's go find out. This is one of the cells that the prisoners were kept in. It's only meant to hold about 40 people, but during certain times, it could hold up to 100. So this almond tree behind me has actually become a unique part of the history of the Hollow prison. The prisoners would come and get reprieved from the heat and the shade. They'd use the leaves as bandages, the nuts for protein, and they'd even use branches to make little pipes and pens, and it became kind of a gathering place, and because of that has now become a symbol and an important part of the history here. definitely does a good job of painting the picture and setting the scene, I guess. Definitely think it's worth coming to. If you're in Hanoi, it's a very integral part of the history here. And it's heavy, it's sad, and it's eye-opening. And gives you some perspective and hopefully some gratitude for where we are now. The 
site behind me here is a beautiful memorial that was actually erected in honor of all the people who died here at the Maison Central and was originally the location of the guillotine. There's this giant art piece on the wall. There's a memorial and a little, I guess it looks like an offering of it. I honestly don't know what it's called, but it's similar to the things I see on the street that people are, you know, burning the gold leaf paper in. This is a very somber, but very important, important place. How do you feel after all this? Heavy. I think the most difficult part for me was reading about the French colonization and seeing the way that the women were treated. It's like everybody was treated horribly, but I guess maybe because I'm a woman it hits me a little bit harder. But to know that they had their children with them, I can't imagine that level of, of pain. And they, you know, they were innocent. Like their mothers may have been revolutionaries, right? But their children weren't, and so the fact that their children were in prison was just hard. I hate, I hate the way that we treat each other because we're all just humans. <laughs> What better way to end the day than with a bowl of pho? We're gonna check out Pho Angui, which is a local favorite just outside of the tourist zone, so we're super excited to check it out. Come on. Oh wow, it's big. <laughs> this looks amazing and it smells delicious. We also got these awesome little donuts, which I'm super excited to try. I don't think we've had these in Vietnam yet. This place only serves one thing, which is beef pho. They don't have a menu. We walked up and she was like, too pho. It's gonna be hot. Oh man. Is it good? Mm. Mm. Yeah. This is a game changer. This might be my favorite pho. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I'm just gonna eat. Yeah, this so. is incredible. Yeah. Bye. We've had an amazing 48 hours in Hanoi and it's definitely not been enough time. But if you like this video or you found it useful, please go ahead and give us a like and we would absolutely love it if you subscribe to us. We're gonna head back to the hotel because we are exhausted and we have a super early day tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to Long Bay.